Hi guys, good morning. Actually, I don't know what time it is where you are. It's morning here. I'm Simeon from Swedish Homestead. In today's video, I want to talk more about our cows. There have been lots of questions. Why they have horns, why we have the Highland cattle breed, um, and the pros and cons of that breed and all of that. But I have something else very, very exciting to share. Um, so stay tuned. I'm going to share that right after the intro. You guys know that I have had some audio issues here on the channel. I'm filming everything with my iPhone 6S and it's a great microphone as long as there is no wind and not many um, background noises. And since I'm filming outside and we live on a peninsula, we always have a little breeze here and it has been quite a challenge. You have seen me jump inside like right now in front of this door so I could um, talk. But one of you guys, one of our viewers, um, he said, hey, I love what you guys from Swedish Homestead are doing. Uh, Tim, Alex, Simeon, and my dad, and all the other people who are putting out content here and, and um, providing all this for you guys. And he said, I wanna bless you guys. And he made it possible for us to purchase a microphone that specifically goes with the iPhone. And this is it. This is the Shure MV88 microphone. It has an incredible quality and we ordered it with a wind chammer. So I should go outside and it should make the world of a difference for this. I'm actually going to plug this in right now and then gonna speak from here so you guys can hear the audio difference right now. Okay, so right now I am recording with the audio with the Shure MV88 microphone. And I'm really excited and looking forward to go inside and um, listen to the difference in audio. We also ordered some good studio headphones that will enable me to just get a better sound when I edit this video so that um, it's all better equalized and a better audio quality for you guys um, to listen to. So. Thank you so much for doing this for us. I don't know if you want to be mentioned by name, but I just want to say thank you so much. And for all of you guys who um, show your appreciation through Patreon or through Facebook or whatever we have, there is someone else who did something so, so cool for my brother. And I want to show that in a video soon. And um, now I want to just test it real quick with the wind chamber because that's what we're going to go outside with and test it with. Okay, so right now I'm recording with the MV88 with uh, the wind chamber on it. How's the sound? I hope it's great. I can't wait to listen to it. So this microphone has actually a few different settings where it can be more pointed towards me speaking and it can also be more angled to capture a lot of um, noise and audio from the sides from animals or whatever. So I'm going to be learning this and playing around with it a bit and hope to be able to provide the best possible um, video and audio quality for you guys. Let's go outside and talk about the cows. Okay guys, here I am standing by our cow shelter with our five Highland cattle cows in here. It's very windy right now to be honest and this would be absolutely impossible for me to film without this microphone right now but I'm gonna be looking forward to see if there's any wind noise on this video. Anyways, these cows, the breed is called Highland Cattle. As the name says, they come from the Scottish Highland, Highlands where they have um, over many, many years, over a very long time, um, been free ranging, wildly um, kept for themselves pretty much. And so they have developed very good survival instincts over the years. Um, there is a lot of harsh weather in the Scottish Highlands and these cows, they have a two layer, a double fur layer and that protects them from this harsh wind and rain and snow sometimes that comes there as well. So um, this benefits, we benefit from that as well because they are so well insulated, we use 
much less feed. And in fact, you use 10 to 15% less feed for them because they are insulated so well during winter time. That's, that's a real pro. You see their long hair goes like all over their noses and it really covers them, uh, it protects them from flies and all of that. The only con that I've heard about, I've never experienced it, is that when these guys get their calves in the summertime, the calves come when there are a lot of flies and the, um, the calves can't reach um, everywhere on their own body to, to itch or lick themselves and then some flies can lay their eggs um, on their back and actually maggots can start eating inside of that fur so but that's only a problem if the calves are that young in the middle of summer not if you get them in the fall or not if you get them in the spring and we plan on getting them in the spring these cows always traditionally um, have these long horns which makes them look so wild and tough and that is something that um, every person who has this breed loves about them the long fur and just their almost buffalo look a little bit and nobody who has this breed that I have ever heard of and I think it's actually one of those huge sins you don't do that you don't cut off their long horns if you have this breed now this breed is also traditionally you know kept fairly wild they um, have the what we call in Sweden the range drift or the the ranch drift where, where they just walk freely even winter time what I have done here is fairly uncommon to put them um, inside of the shelter and I had a few concerns when I did this partially because this breed has a very strong um, hierarchy more than other cows and I want I didn't know how that would be in the shelter with the horns in such a let's say much closer tighter area than if they would be free on the field and I just had some questions um, about all of this and I put him in, observed him very closely, and to my surprise, it works very, very well. People say that um, the horns just cause trouble. I believe that's very true. If you keep them um, industrial, in an industrial way, in these stables, especially if you have dairy cows, I would not want to have horns in any way. Here's the thing with the horns. We are not gonna um, continue with this breed forever. Let me share real quick why we got this breed. One. Beef prices are extremely high right now in Sweden, which has brought the prices up for um, for the livestock as well. And it, we right now are gonna invest into the poultry production on our farm to, to earn money with the first year, but we just needed some cows to graze our lands. And um, these guys are much cheaper than other breeds for several different reasons. That's the main reason why we got the breed. But it's not just that we got it because we couldn't afford any other breed. I also want to continue breeding with these and crossbreed them with the Belted Galloway breed, which has a lot of similar characteristics than these guys, but they don't have horns and all the calves will be without horns. Now you may wonder why in the world is this breed cheaper than other breeds? Well, here are several reasons. This breed is not used for uh, typically for commercial production anymore because it grows slower noticeably slower than other breeds why do we have it anyway well like I said wow this is stormy I, I'm really curious to see if, if there's wind noise sorry about that anyways um, you see when you don't brace your animals the way that the industry tells you you should the best breed and the best kind of animal for you becomes something different very quickly. If you free range your chicken, you want a big bird, not a small hybrid layer. And it's the same with the cows. You see, for us, they're not in a warm stable. We save money that they're insulated so well. This is an old heritage breed. Um, barely ever any problems with birth or sicknesses. Um, they take care of the calves. These cows, this cattle breed, they can have a healthy calf every year till they're over 20 years old, which is pretty much double than most other breeds. So that is a pro. And, um, wow, this is stormy. And so there are several different um, 
things to consider when you choose your breed. Now, this breed also finishes amazingly well on grass and even poor hay and poor pastures compared to other breeds. So they eat stuff that other breeds don't eat. Um, they eat a lot of underbrush as well, branches and all of that kind of stuff. So that's why we want to have these genetics even in the bottom as we want to um, crossbreed them with a couple other breeds to see and, and get a, an animal that finishes well on grass and grows a little quicker than these guys do but still has all these survival genetics and, and all that nice growth. Plus their meat is a quality um, that is just uncomparable to most other breeds and, and these big production breeds they don't uh, finish well without grain anymore and personally I don't think that herbivores should eat grain um, especially not big amounts of grain so um, yeah there you have it uh, why you know the industry doesn't use this breed that's why they're cheaper but for us they work great they mow well and um, we can have them like this uh, when we will crossbreed them, you know, I don't know if I will switch someday completely to, to the Belted Galloway. The problem with that is that there's a small uh, amount of those in Sweden. That they, there's a risk for inbreeding. And that's also one reason why we want to crossbreed these. So I'm really looking forward to see how that goes. Let me also real quick um, address the horns a little more in detail. Um, the con that I see with the horns right now is that, um, you know, if you're around with kids and something would happen on accident, I've never heard of that, but of course it can happen. But I have to say that it is just absolutely fascinating and amazing to see how these cows handle their horns. They know exactly where they are. They don't touch anything on accident. They know exactly where the tip of their horns are and um, you know even when they fight a little bit and, and make sure that the hierarchy is established even in this tight area they are careful and considerate and they I've never seen one hurt the other one badly in any way and um, you know this space is big enough for them to do this fighting without getting hurt. If I had this breed with horns and without horns, I would probably choose it without horns. But um, we don't mind it right now. The only thing is, I mentioned that, you know, you could probably um, put some hay racks in here that the horns, um, that it, where the horns wouldn't bother. But, um, you know, I, I don't want to build one right now. I, I need some hay in the deep bedding. That's why I put it on top. They eat most of it. Um, the waste is actually not that much because the hay that you see here a lot in the deep bedding is other bedding hay that I put in there as well. And, um, you know, of course they spread out some hay, but that's fine with me. Um, I would probably put a hay rack in it if I had one at hand right now, but the horns haven't been a problem like that. But like I said, eventually you want to get away from the horns. So I got, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, little video about our cattle breed and why we have them. I think they're absolutely beautiful. They look like teddy bears and um, it'll be fun to see how this whole thing will develop and how they will do when we will do controlled mob grazing in the summer, how this deep bedding turns out and all of that. Stay tuned for all of this on the Swedish Homestead channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you soon. Bye bye.